What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Hope you guys are having an amazing day today. We are back yet again, bringing you guys some more competitive ranked old battles for Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. In today's video, we're going to be showcasing an Umbreon team for Series 2 that actually got rank 1 on the Master Tier. You guys already know the deal. If you do enjoy the content anytime, make sure you support me as a content creator by leaving a like on today's video. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, take two seconds out of your day to scroll down a little bit and click that big red subscribe button. It really goes a long way. I want to give a huge shout out to everybody who is a subscriber to the channel or anybody who just tunes in and watches. It really does go a long way and it helps me grow as a content creator. But let's get started here. We got Umbreon in the top left corner. I feel like Umbreon is one of those Pokemon that everybody loves to use. It's super decent on the rank ladder and it's really great in certain situations. It's got Inner Focus as its ability, the Mirror Herb as its item, and then it's rocking Foul Play, Snarl, Skill Swap, and Moonlight for a nice lovely moveset for a bulky Umbreon. Second Pokemon is going to be Dragonite, and if you guys have been playing any ranked battles at all, you guys know Choice Band, Normal Terror type Dragonite is super, super broken in this game, and that's the exact Dragonite that we're rocking out with on today's team. Inner Focus, Choice Band, Normal Terror type with Extreme Speed, Outrage, Rock Slide, and Low Kick. Third Pokemon is going to be Armrouge. Armrouge is amazing in the meta at the moment, especially paired up with Ndidi, and we have that Pokemon on this team as well. Armrouge has the weak armor as its ability, the Focus Sash as, as its item, and it's got Armor Cannon, Expanding Force, Dark Pulse, and Protect. Fourth Pokemon is going to be Ndidi. Like I already mentioned, Ndidi is super broken with Armrouge by its side, one of the best combos in the game, but Ndidi by itself is still very good on the support side. It has Psychic Surge, Safety Goggles as its item, Psychic, Protect, Helping Hand, and Follow Me. Fifth Pokemon is going to be Fluttermane, one of the better Paradox Pokemon in the game at the moment with Protosynthesis and Life Orb as its item. We got Moonblast, we got Shadow Ball, Dazzling Gleam, and Protects for its four moves. Iron Hands is going to be our final Pokemon. Iron Hands is great in multiple different situations. It can fake out, it can out-bulk opponents, it can hit hard on the physical attack inside. Just a great Pokemon all around for any team. It has Quirk Drive and the Assault Vest as its item, Wild Charge, Drain Punch, Heavy Slam, and Fake Out for an amazing moveset for any Iron Hands. Guys, if you want to rent this team for yourself, rent code is at the top right hand corner, but let's get after it. Let's hop on that ranked double ladder. Let's grab some wins with this rank one Umbreon team. First match coming at you guys, going up against a Flutter Main and Great Tusk team, alongside with two very good support Pokemon. They got Amoongus and they got Mousel. Very, very strong support Pokemon. And then their final two, going to be Bax Caliber alongside with Grimstrong. This seems like Indeedee and Armourish could definitely come out here for us for a lead. I feel like it's definitely powerful. I feel like they're going to lead a Pokemon like Grimstrong, right? Grimstrong seems to be the best lead for this guy, right? That could end up leading Grimstrong. That could be a problem. So maybe I might want to lead other Pokemon. More so like Fluttermane and Iron Hands wouldn't be bad. Right? Fluttermane and Iron Hands is not bad at all. I kind of do dig both those Pokemon. We have a lot of super effective moves. We can really get after it. So I'm kind of with it. I'm kind of all about it. Let's do it. Let's go Fluttermane alongside with Iron Hands. Considering I feel like this is just so predictable, the armors and the needy. And I'm going to bring Umbreon and Dragonite in the back end. Just seems to be your best bet. Let's lock it in. Let's lock it down. Let's grab ourselves a win here in match number one. But that's the thing about Indeedee and Armourouge at the moment. It is still super strong, super good if you get it in at the right time. But it's very predictable because whenever I go up against it or whenever I am I have a team with it, everybody always plays up against it. They're like, okay, Indeedee Armourouge is here. Let me play up against it. Let me leave Pokemon to kind of counter that because if not, I'm just going to bang on them, right? Makes sense. Because if, say, I go Indeedee Armourouge and they don't lead a counter to it, it's pretty much GG's. I can just set up a nice little expanded force, get ripping with that, and just call it games, right? Let's see who they end up leading. I feel like Grimstarl has to come out here for a lead, right? It's gotta be Grim Grim. Yep, there's the Grim Snarl, alongside with the Great Tusk. Great Tusk and the Grimmy Grim comes out here. We end up going in with these two. And I could Grass Terror here. I could definitely Grass Terror. I feel like the play here is just to drop like a nice lovely Moonblast. I could also Gleam. I have Terror. Yeah, I have Terror Fairy. I might as well throw slice in the Fairy here. One of them is going to Terrasilize, and who do I fake out is the real question. I gotta fake out the Great Tusk. We cannot allow damage to really fly through here. We cannot allow. So I'm gonna fake out the Great Tusk a lot. I'm going to Terrasilize my Flutter main just so I can pop some uh, big time fairy moves. And chances are, Grimstarl is going to pop a Light Screen, maybe? Wait, it's gotta be Light Screen. Or it could be on for Spirit Breaks, but I just think this Grimstarl is here for support, and he wants to set up. The lovely little Flutter main here. Lovely little flutter. Obviously, I could have faked out the Grimstrong, but again, I just don't want to. Uh, I don't want to take a headlong rush with big time damage from Great Tusk. It's just not worth it. It's really not worth it. So they're also going to Thrasilize. That's got to be Tusk, yeah. 
The Interrasilized Tusk in a straight fire. Straight to fire. A little bit of fire action, and I should have moved west. It's all good. I'll take the lean damage. Fake outs can come out here. A little bit of build action right on him, and we get a crit. What a way to start the video. We love it. Light screen. We knew that was coming out here, no problem whatsoever. And I'm going to be able to pop a nice lovely clean. Big time damage with the clean coming out here. Let's rip it. Let's send it. And oh, wow. That's some nice damage on the group straw. That's some nice damage. We like that damage. And then from here, what should I do? Definitely a clean to take out the Grim Snarl. But then, do I... Do I Drain Punch this thing? <coughs> I think I just Drain Punch this thing. Get some HP back. I mean, what's he, he might be popping an EQ. I don't want to use my Terra and Terrasalize in the grass. Like, if he hits me, I think we should be able to survive a ground move like EQ or something. That's totally fine. He's just going to withdraw it. Okay. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Mouse? Oh, oh we like that turn. We like that turn because we're drain punching into that. That's going to be super effective. He is popping a reflect. Both screens are out and about, which kind of sucks for us, but still, we're getting some work done. We're going to be able to take out Grimstarl here, and on top of that, get off some big-time damage onto this mouse over here. Maybe even KO it. Maybe even KO it. So, hot start for us so far. Hot start. Real good start. Real good start. Now we'll rip a nice lovely drain punch. And we say see you later, mouse hold right through the screens. Get this four mouses on out of here. Four mice, right? Yeah, four mice. Get them on out of here. Get them on out of here. We don't need them here. We don't want them here. We don't want them here. So now he's left with Fluttermane and Great Tusk. Cool with that. I'm cool with that. Uh, so Great Tusk can come out here. If our Fluttermane outspeeds, but I think this one's, yeah, I was going to say, I think this one's Booster Energy. <laughs> and that one's Speed Titan. So he's going to outspeed me, but we can still potentially eat up a shot here. With that said, I'm just going to go for that. I'm just going to double down into this thing. Look, we just double down into Fluttermane. We get rid of that, we can easily win this match, no problem. We can easily win this match. But that was just such a strong lead from us. Fluttermane ends up protecting us. That's a, a big-time protect, to be honest. EQ? Gotta be EQ. That's a big-time protect from us. That was actually a really good play. Oh, no. It's just straight for a heavy sling. I'll deal with that. That's fine. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Been coughing so much. Dude. Still scratchy throat. Feeling a lot better. Should be back to 100% to in a couple days. But yeah, still feeling a little bit under the weather. But Heavy Slam comes out here, gets protected. Okay. I can deal with that. And now I can bring out a Pokemon like Umbreon. What do you mean you? I still have my Terra. I do still have my Terra. What do I bring out here? I'm gonna go Umbreon here. I think I'm just gonna Thrasize in the water. I think I'm going to try size in the water. What is my Dragonite skill? Is it multi scale? Inner focus. <coughs> this inner focus. I don't know if I should save Terra. I think I should save Terra for you. A normal Terra could be good for us. I think I should save Terra. I think I should save Terra. So we are just going to go into nice, lovely, heavy slam into that thing alongside with a foul play. So he's just going to target down my, uh, yeah, I was going to say, he's just going to target down my Iron Hands. This match is actually coming really close, really close, but we still have Terra here. We still have Terra. We have a bulky little Umbreon, shiny Umbreon, which looks amazing. I love its colors. We'll see how this one plays out here, because Foul Play's coming in hot here. Doing some decent damage. I really like that damage. And now we're going to be able to bring out my lovely little Dragonite. Lovely little Dragonite. Obviously, I could E-Speed, but I feel like I have to Terrasize and start popping some EQs, right? Or not EQs, Rock Slides. I'm choice banned too. I am choice banned. So from here, I feel like I just snarl, right? Special attack drops. And pop the terrasalization here. I have no te wait, I terrasalized already? Oh my god, I did. I totally forgot. I totally forgot. That hurts. That totally hurts. So rock slides are play anyway. We're gonna go rock slide. We're choicing into it. And Fluttermane's gonna set up a sub. I don't mind that. Rockside comes out here. That should KO Great Tusk. It does. That's fine. Does that take off the sub as well? 
It does. Okay, that's big time turns. I'm super surprised you went for that. Super surprised. Because we get rid of the Great Tusk. We take off sub, and now we get a special attack drop on top of that. Umbreon, Snarl coming in clutch. We love it. We love it. <coughs> that's big time plays. Now I can start ripping with Snarls again, or even another... Uh, or a foul play. And then just keep throwing rock slides into this Pokemon. I like it. Moonblast coming in high here. We still eat. Thank you. Thank you, little Snarls. Special attack is going to drop. We need to land this rock slide, which we do. How much damage are we doing? Plenty enough. Plenty enough. We love it. Snarl should come out here. Pick up the KO like it does. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Hot start for today's video. Umbreon and Dragonite clutching up in the back end. We grab ourselves a victory. We're hopping into our second match, and we're going up against a Trick Room team right here. They got Screamtail, Iron Hands, Fluttermane, Arcanine, Amoongus, and last but not least, Gothitelle. So they could go in with the uh, Parasong with uh, Gothitelle and Screamtail. That's definitely an option, but this just seems like a free Indeedee armor setup, right? I feel like these two are really going to be thriving with us, so I definitely want to bring both of them and get it going with them. Next Pokemon I want to bring in, maybe Umbreon. Do I lock in Umbreon here? Umbreon's not bad, but... uh. I feel like there's might be better options here. Umbreon definitely came in clutch in that first battle, but I feel like going into Fluttermane is a must, alongside with a Pokemon like either Dragonite or Iron Hands. It just makes the most sense, right? We do have Inner Focus on Dragonite, which is pretty solid, and we have all the choice moves, so I really do like him in the back end. I'm going to go in with Dragonite. I'm going to go in with Dragonite, but yo, this team right here, I'm loving it so far. I love the versatility that it has on it. I love the cool variety of Pokemons with it. You got the Umbreon, you got the Arm Rouge, you got the Dragonite, Iron Hands, Fluttermane. Loving this team. Loving this team so far. Plus, it's super strong. Got rank one on the ladder. I'm telling you guys, rent it if you guys need a team to push Master Tier before the season actually ends because we have about a week left. You definitely want to try to get rocking with it. But we end up going into Indeedee Armors. I'm cool with this. They end up going into Screamtail and Arcanine. They're going to intimidate me. I'm special attacking. Thriving. Psychic Surge is out and about. Okay, so what's my play here? I could just expand it force, right? If I want to. But I feel like it's Armor Cannon. Dark Pulse isn't too bad either if I grass slice. I'm just gonna go for armor cannon. I'm gonna say screw it. Do I help? I'm just gonna help hand armor cannon. See how much damage we do. I know Screamtail is so bulky. But we're gonna give this a try because I think Arcanine might even protect here. <coughs> so we help in hand up. We get that boost on attack. Armor cannon's gonna fly. How much damage is this really gonna do? Because Screamtail's a bulk. Yeah, look how bulky that thing is. Oh! So bulky. So bulky. Snarls might come out here from Arcanine, and it does. That's gonna hurt me. That's gonna hurt me a lot. So Snarls come out here, get the special attack drop, and then maybe Trick Room might come out here. Are you gonna pop a Trick Room? You are indeed. The Trick Room comes out in about, uh, what's my play now? What is my play now? Because you're obviously just gonna Snarl me again. I might as well just double down to this Arcanine, get off as much damage as I possibly can. Screamtail, I'll deal with you later. Screamtail's kinda just there to set up Parasongs, set up Trick Room. I'll deal with that later. While my special attack is somewhat decent, because he's just going to snarl me and, until I die, right? And that's fine by me, because I can waste out a few trick and turns with this, too. It's a withdrawal in Arcanine. Wow, that's a surprise. Who are you going to go into? Who are you going into here? It's going to be Gothel, so he wants to try to get off that Parasol. But Psychic's not going to do too much damage, either. It's expanding force. That's a little swap, and he's going to Parasol right here. Which, I mean, I don't mind if you Parasong. I really don't mind if you Parasong here. It's fine. <laughs> That's fine, because I was thinking these Pokemon were dying anyway, so... I'd rather you Parasong take out your own Pokemon. But he's gonna Parasong. He cannot swap now. Actually, he might be able to swap. I know Shadow Attack doesn't allow me to swap. I'm here. I'm just gonna start ripping Dark Pulses. Dark Pulse and... He has a Psychic U down? Yeah, I like that. I like that, because I don't think they can take me out. That one's going to go for a follow me. One Dark Pulse can do a nice chunk of damage onto the uh, the Gothitelle. We can just get Thriving here. We can just get Thriving. So we still have our Terrasalize. We still have two very strong Pokemon in the back end with Fluttermane and Dragonite. Choice Band Dragonite. And I still have my Terrasalization, which is really, really good for us. And I have inner focus on it. That is another reason why I brought it. Because I knew probably they were going to bring Arcanine. So it just works out well. So they're allowed to swap here. And here you're going to swap into Reed. Right back into Arcanine. Okay. 
So right back into Arcanine they go. And he's going to end up skill swapping. So are you going to get off like double Intimidate? Is it, was that the play? Is that the play? That's fine. We're, 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 phys we're special attacking. We're special attacking. Psychic going to fly here. Do like no damage this thing. Then on top of that, Dark Pulse is going to fly. Which Dark Pulse can chunk up. Yep, Dark Pulse picks up the KO, which we really like. So right now, we're just wasting out turns. But the whole point of that skill swap was just so I cannot swap out. And that's that's kind of smart, but I don't I don't mind if these Pokemon go down. I really don't. I really don't, because once they go down, I just bring out my other backup Pokemon. And chances are, Trick Room's going to pretty much be up. And I'm waiting for this uh, terrain to actually end. Because once Dragon Egg can come out here, I can start E-Speeding, Thrasilizing to normal with Choice Band. But I need this terrain to end, which terrain ends rather soon, right? Maybe one or two more turns, which I can deal with from there. I can definitely deal with that. So Amoongus now comes out here. I really like, he doesn't really have any big attackers to kind of take me out here. So I really like what we're saying. Expanding Force is an absolute must play. I'm just going to Psychic this slot. I mean, probably going to Snarl, right? Or he's just going to Spore me. Plenty of options here. Nope, Amoongus just protects. That's fine. That's why we double down into Arcanine slot. And we'll get after it this way. So Psychic flying. Chipping up a little bit of damage. And Snarl coming across the board again. Cool with that. I'm cool with that. As long as we can waste out Trick Room turns, we pretty much have this match on lock. <coughs> but the team that, that our opponent brought in, like, did not have enough attack power, right? Thinking about it, who was it? It was Amoongus? It was Amoongus, Arcanine. Try here. Amoongus, Arcanine, Gothitelle, and Streamtail. Your best special attacker and your best physical attacker you did not bring. And none of these Pokemon can really do crazy damage. So I feel like it's just like a stall team here that's not doing too good. I think we still have terrain, right? Yeah, we have terrain, I think, for one more turn, which works perfectly. Yeah, everything ends in one turn. Oh, that, that works amazing. So I'm going to do that, and I'm just going to help hand this. I'm just going to help hand it. Actually, I should have followed me that shot. Should have followed me. That's a bad play by me. That's a bad, bad play by me. I could have got off a free expanding force here, and I blew it. And I blew it. Okay, never mind. It works. Actually, maybe not. He might spore me. But yeah, I should have followed me the shot. It could have been a free expanding force. And I blew it. And I blew it. Because he's just going to spore me. I, mean, I, I I pretty much knew that, right? <coughs> nope. Goes for a pop. I don't know what our opponent's doing. I do not know what our opponent's doing. Just giving us free, free shots here. Just giving us free shots. Expanding force comes out here. Picks up some big time damage onto Amoongus. Some big time damage onto Jigglypuff or Screamtail, whatever you want to call it. Now I get to bring out the big guns with Trick Room. Hold on. The big guns get to come out here. That's fine. Parasong drops. I'm cool with that. I am cool. I am cool with that. So now we get to bring out Dragonite. We get to bring out Fluttermane. He's probably going to swap an Arcanine to intimidate us, but it's not going to do anything because. One of my Pokemon are special attacking. And the other Dragonite right here has lovely inner focus. So I'm going to swap into him. And we ain't cooking here. And I feel like he wants to pop another Trick Room, right? I feel like we just double down into Scream Tail here. Trick Room seems like an absolute must. Unless he's going to Rage Powder. Rage Powder? Ooh. That's probably the play. And the real question is, do I Terra... Who do I Terrasalize him? I could Terra you and just pop these speeds. And I think that's the play, right? Yeah, I'm just going to do that, and I'm just going to Shadow Ball this slot. Because even if he Rage Powders, E-Speed will take out the Moongus, and then Shadow Ball slide over here. Perfect, turn. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <coughs> so I'm liking it. So he has a Withdrawal. With the Withdrawal. I knew this was happening, but... We have Inner Focus, so it's not going to affect me. But it just seems like our opponent's playing really weird right now. Like, really weird. Like, swapping too much, bringing in the wrong Pokemon... Like, they, they, they played really well, like, in the sense that, okay, they set up the trick room, they got rolling with that. Other than that, it's like, it's a little weird. Oh, he ends up, oh, that's a good terror. That's a good terror right there. That's a great terror. That's a great terror right there. That could do me really dirty if he has terror blast. I need to get rid of that Jigglypuff. The Jigglypuff's probably setting up a trick room, correct?
Let's see how this one plays out here. So I end up going for E speed. This should chunk up some nice damage on Arcanine. KO it. Big time KO. And then Shadow Ball is going to fly. Lovely little Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball coming in hot. Chunking up some nice damage. And we don't get the drop. And what do you go for? Trick him? Put up a Parasol. I don't mind that. I just don't mind that. Is there any way they can waste the turns out? That's the real question. And I don't know if you can win on a Parasong. I'm not too sure. Because <laughs> I'm going to take out a Moongus this next turn with an E-Speed. I'm just going to Shadow Ball this next slot, right? It just seems like the play. We got three turns to finish off this battle. And it's actually coming a lot closer. Oh, I forgot it has Regenerator. Kind of sucks. But yeah, E-Speed's going into that. I'm going to Shadow Ball this slot. And I'm expecting Protect, right? Or maybe even Rage Patterns. I'm expecting them. And a smart play here would be Rage Powder. No, not Rage Powder. Protect the Mooga, set up Trick Room, and then spore me out and win the game. <laughs> that could be rough. That could be rough. But our opponent's playing super weird, right? No attack power, just Parasong, and he ends up protecting Jigglypuff. Not fine with this. Is it double protect? No, it's a single protect. How much damage are we doing here? Just give me the KO. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we get a crit. Oh, we get a crit. We get a big time crit, and now it's pretty much GG's. It's GG's here. Unless you land triple protect. That's the only way we lose this match. And that would be rough. That would be really rough. But our opponent, like, got me on my boots here. I was shaking in my boots right here. Our opponent came close to winning this match. Low key, when I felt like we had this match on lock a while ago. Which just goes to show how strong Parasong is. And it goes to show that Pokemon matches are never really over till, till the end of it. The battle was finally canceled. We go 2-0. We're dominating right now. Let's hop to our third and final. Grab ourselves a perfect record. Final match coming at you guys. I'm feeling good. Let's grab ourselves a perfect record. Going up against an Iron Bundle team with Fluttermane, King Gambit, Arcanine, Mousehold, and Great Tusk. So very strong Pokemon on the team. Gotta watch out for that Annihilate because I have a weird feeling it's Choice Scarf. And he's just here to kind of just final Gambit me and take me out. Could be a problem. Could definitely be a problem. But who should I lead in that case? Could go into you. I could also go into you because you cannot be final gambit. Well, you can be, but you have more HP than that. And I mean. So I really like the Fluttermane and the, uh, the Iron Hands lead. I really like it. And then also I could go in with this and this if I wanted to. Or I could go Arm Rouge and DD just follow me the shots. And then Expanded Force. Because Expanded Force is going to be able to rip pretty hard here. I kind of like that a little bit more. Right? It makes the most sense. I don't mind if Indeedee goes down. I really do not. Indeedee's just there to set up the Psychic Terrain to kind of get rolling. And then we go Fluttermane and Umbreon. I really like that. I low-key like that. I'm with it. And I don't want to bring Dragonite because if Indeedee dies too quick, then our E-Speed kind of goes to nothing because we can't E-Speed in Psychic Terrain. So it's really not worth it to kind of do that. But if he doesn't lead Annihilate, we pretty much just get off the Arm Rouge and Indeedee combo. We can roll out strong. I like it. I dig it. <laughs> and what this uh and what this arm rouge has on it that most arm rouges don't have is the dark terror type dark terror type can work really really well we know snarl he wants to try to get that rolling here i think e uh expanding force here and a psychic right into the uh arcanine slide is probably the play it's probably gonna even terrestrialize that great tusk but yeah i'm just gonna psychic this thing and i'm just gonna expand force across the board i could end up terrestrializing you as well just so Snarl's not super effective. I kinda dig that. And a ground move wouldn't be super effective. I kinda dig that. You know what? We're gonna do that. We're gonna terrestrialize our armors right here, right now. Get it, armors. Get it, dog. Wow. It, uh, Fluttermane and Iron Hands would have been a great lead for this, too. Would have been a real solid lead. We end up terrestrializing. I don't think he's terrestrializing, which is good. Because if I can pop an expanded force, that's some big time damage, on especially onto the Great Tusk. We go straight in the dark. Just so we can soak up some shots. So we go dark, boy. Great Tusk ends up protecting. That's fine. We're doubling down into Arcanine. We know Arcanine wants to go for that Snarl. There it is. The special attack drop doing me, doing me a little dirty, but... We can deal with that. 
Expanded Force is going to fly here. It gets blocked on that shot. And we're going to deal a little bit of damage here. How much damage do we do? This thing's bulk. This thing's bulk. Psychic flying out here. Chipping up a bit more damage. Chipping up a bit more damage. Hmm. I kind of forget how weak armor works. I don't want to get hit by a super effective shot. Pokemon's defense stat is lower when it takes damage from... Okay, physical move. Yeah, just do the same thing, right? He might even Thrasalize here. No, he doesn't. So Snarl's gonna come out here again. Drop me down a little bit lower. Big Tusk is probably gonna go next. Probably maybe go for a headlong rush or close combat. Yeah, there's close combat. That's gonna take me out, no problem. So the close combat's mean. He kind of just counters my, uh, my armors and DD combo. He counters it pretty well. I should have followed me that shot, but it's fine. I kind of already accept that my NDD and armors are dead. <laughs> I kind of already accept it. So now I'm going to go into Fluttermane. Fluttermane just seems to be the play. I know we outspeed. What do I? I definitely want to follow me the shot. And I could just go into Moonblast. I could go into Shadow Ball. What do I want to do? Cause man, dude, that sucks. Cause we know he's gonna try us. We already know he's gonna try us. You know what? Maybe I'll do this. What do I want to do here? I really don't want my my Pokemon to get snarled. Now we're gonna do this. We're gonna go for a Helping Hand Shadow Ball and look for the KO. We're gonna look for the KO on this Arcanine. Try to get rid of it. And Great Tusk ends up protecting. Okay, that's solid. That is solid. That is solid. So if we can pick up KO here, this could be big time. This could be big time. Bring us right back in this match. KO this thing. Let's go. Let's go. So solid, solid turn there. Took me a little bit to think of, but I like that turn right there. And it was even better that the Great Tusk did protect. Because now I have a Flutter main with no special attack drops on it. That, that was what I was worried about. I was worried about that thing coming out here, popping snarls on me and doing me dirty. Okay, so now they have Great Toss. They still have Terra. We do not have Terra, which kind of sucks. We kind of wasted ours on the armors. And we're going to see their next Pokemon. Probably Iron Bundle, to be honest with you. Yep, it is Iron Bundle. Come on, man. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Probably going to try to slow me down. Probably going to Terrasalize the... Uh... I think he has to Terrasalize the, the Tusk. Just seems like the play. Obviously, I could go into Psychic, but I'm just going to follow me his shots. I am going to Moonblast this slot because Iron Bundle could protect here. Could definitely protect. Or it could just straight up attack with Ice Humans and stuff. But I feel like the Tusk has to Terrasalize here. But I'm still Moonblasting in that slot because we can get some nice damage considering it is minus one on special defense. And if it doesn't Terrasalize, we pretty much pick up some big time damage or maybe even a KO. Okay, I feel it. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Not a bad match. Let's see what they're doing. They're, they're thinking a lot, but Iron Bundle's a problem. Un Iron Bundle's definitely a problem. No Terrasalize would be like that. What is Bundle going for? Bundle goes for the Ice So he wants to speed control. Flutter Man, can you still outspeed? Can you still outspeed Flutz? You can outspeed Flutz. You do not. Headlong Rush does come in here. He's going to take out my NDD. We are going to be able to get rid of Great Tusk, which is huge. Because this minus two on special defense. No way it's surviving this unless it has a Cloak Sash. Cool, cool, cool. The Moonblast flies to rear. See you later, Tusk. It has Sash. It- What- What great Tusk runs Sash? Things are already bulky enough. This one's running Sash. This one is running Sash. That is just ugly. Just terrible. We do not like that. We do not like that. So if I had to guess another Icy Wind's probably coming out here. I do want to Snarl to uh, drop special attack. And then just protect you. Because I, I got to get rid of some Pokemon here. This match is too good right now. It's too good. We already know, we already know the Icy Wind's coming in here. Already know. We're going to hope that the... Uh, actually, he's probably not even going to Icy Wind. He knows he has speed. But we're hoping that the Great Tusk Headlong Rush is coming into the... Uh, the Flutter Just so we can block it and get rid of it and kind of go from there. 
But they still have one other Pokemon in the back end. So tough. So tough. God dang, focus Sash over here. Do me dirty. Do me dirty, Sash. But I end up protecting the Flutz. My girl Flutz. We protect it. A freeze dry comes in here. We block it. That's big time. Can you also headlong rush this thing? Double into me. No, he goes for a close combat there. Okay. Super effective shot. Hurts me a little bit. But now we get off this lovely little snarl. The snarl is here. Drop that thing a special attack. And we get cooking. And we get cooking. But I think a freeze dry might KO my flutter main. And they also have a flutter main. Yeah, that's uh that's rough. You are faster than me too. That's pretty much GG's. That's pretty much GG's. I'm gonna go for this. They'd still have Tarasize as well. Mm, solid third and final battle, but it's not looking good for us. It looks like this is our last turn, right? They have speed. I do not have terror. They have terror. He's just gonna shadow ball my flutter main and freeze stride my Umbreon. Hurts the soul. Hurts soul, but solid set of matches for today's video. Definitely solid set of matches. I almost had to come back going in match number three right here. But again, Indeedy Armors. Did I lead them? I don't did I lead Indeedy Armors? I honestly forget. I actually did. I just got countered hard by Arcanine and Great Tusk. It was tough. But here comes Terrestrialization. So I come from 60,000 miles away. And like I said, Shadow Balls can come into my Flutter Main, Three Stry, or whatever's gonna go into my Umbreon. It's game set match. Or you're still just gonna icy one. That's a little weird. That is a little weird. You already have speed on me. You already have speed on me, so you're giving me a shot. Oh no, you're just gonna do that. Okay, never mind. GG's. <laughs> Good game. Good game right there. 2 1 for today's video. Not a bad set of matches. Got to showcase this Umbreon team really, really well. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. A solid set of matches with this rank one Umbreon team. I'm telling you guys, if you want to push some high ranks of Master Chair before the series ends, rent this team. It's got everything you need. It has the arm rouge and the DD combo, which is one of the strongest in the game. It's got the Dragonite E Speed Choice Band normal terror type combo right there. Absolutely amazing, very easy to use. And then you got Fluttermane Iron Hands, which are two of the top tier Paradox Pokemon in the game. But guys, that is going to be for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread positive today. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.